welcome back to my homestead. Today I'm in the kitchen because I just made a very special cake. This cake earned its own name and it was named after a very beautiful city, probably the top five most beautiful cities in the Europe, Kiev. Kiev is a capital of Ukraine and this cake was named after Kiev. Check this out. This cake is very unusual because it's not the regular flour and milk and sugar batter, not at all. The base of this cake is meringue and it's made with lots and lots of egg whites. So as you eat it, it kind of crunchy, yet it melts in your mouth. It's very unusual. So I just made it and it needs to go in a fridge and chill and rest for about uh, five, six, seven hours or maybe even longer, it can sit overnight and kind of marinate all of those flavors together because I made it to celebrate New Year's with my family. So I'm gonna show you how I made this cake. Um, it takes a while to make it because it needs time to cool off, it bakes for a long time, but the ingredients are very, very simple. And I think pretty much anybody will have those ingredients in their fridge and in their pantry. Nothing special to run out and buy. I can tell you that it requires lots and lots of eggs. You're gonna need one dozen of eggs. Are you guys ready? One dozen of eggs, I'm not kidding. All right, so let me show you how I made it. Oh, and um, I will cut it on New Year's as we celebrate the New Year's Eve and um, I will cut it and I will post a picture on my Instagram. So I'm not gonna show it to you right now. So if you guys wanna see what it looks like inside and um, uh, go along with us, uh, it's gonna be posted on my uh, Instagram page. So if you wanna find my Instagram, it's gonna be below in the description box. And also I'm gonna leave uh, the recipe for this cake as well. Okay, so let's start working on the batter. So I'm gonna need 12 eggs. Also, I'm gonna need two and a half cups of white sugar. I know it sounds like a lot, but that's what it calls for. And then I'm gonna be using half a cup of flour. That's all that's gonna require. This is four cups of walnuts, and they are whole walnuts. So we're gonna to need to either break them or chop them or something like that to make them into a smaller crumble. I think I'm just gonna end up using a food processor to make it easier. Okay, the next step, I need to separate eggs uh, into egg yolks and egg um, whites because the, the batter is going to be meringue batter. So that means I need lots and lots of egg whites and I need to separate them. Now, I'm going to save, save those um, egg yolks because I'm going to be using them in my custard cream that I'm going to be making later. So it's going to take me a little while to separate all of these egg uh, egg whites. Thank goodness my chickens are laying so many eggs, so I have plenty of eggs for this recipe. But yes, we're going to need a whole dozen. Wow. All right, and I'm going to put it in the mixer. I'm going to start uh, whipping it nice and slow and gentle because I don't want to make a mess, and I'm going to be adding sugar to that. I'm going to dump a little bit at a time just simply because I don't want to make a mess and uh, it needs to mix in all uh, evenly throughout and um, and then I'm going to eventually increase the speed because right now it's nice and low speed but I need to increase the speed because it's going to beat for a while it's going to whip those egg whites for a while until it becomes nice and firm and big white mass the meringue is going to be a uh, very stiff picks. Um, I'm not going to waste time and in the meanwhile while the egg whites are whipping over there I'm going to turn the walnuts and the flour. I'm going to mix them all together all at once. I'm just going to save one step and I'm going to um, pulverize them through a food processor to turn them into a crumble. And this crumble is going to go into the batter. And that's what's going to give my meringue a nice and a nice bite, kind of like a nice little crunch. So I'm going to, I'm not going to um, mix it so much that it turns into flour, uh, like a meal. It still has to be a little chunky, but nice and manageable little chunks. It's going to be very pleasant kind of um, broken down uh, walnuts. So the egg yolks, I'm not going to throw away. I'm going to cover and put them in a fridge for later. 
Let's talk about the baking forms. Okay, so this is a, a spring form and it has a nine inch base. So if I had two of them, I would use them. However, I only have one of them and it's best to bake both layers at the same time. If I did not have two spring forms or two base forms, I would uh, bake, make the batter one uh, half at a time. So this is eight inch, so it's gonna be perfect. Um, I'm going to need to line them with some parchment paper and I need to measure out the base of it. That was to be my job as a kid. I used to help mama in the kitchen. I would have to trace uh, the forms with a pencil or a pen and then cut them out. So it should fit perfectly on the bottom of each pan. All right, and also I'm going to put a little bit of butter on the sides because that should help uh, to prevent the batter from sticking to the sides while I'm baking the meringue uh, in each form, okay? So I'm going to repeat the same thing for the second base. Check out this meringue. Goodness, it's beautiful. Look at it, silky white. And look how firm it is. If I turn the whisk upside down, nothing is falling. That means the meringue is finished. It's perfect. That's exactly how it should be. All right. So to that, I'm going to add the mixture of uh, nuts and flour because that's going to be the batter. So look at that. Only really four ingredients in the batter. So I'm going to fold it. But when I'm folding it, something to keep in mind that is important to... Um, um, when I'm mixing it, I should say, is not to disturb it too much. So I'm going to mix it from the bottom up, all in only in one direction. So I'm going to try not to overwork this batter. It still should be super, super fluffy and light. So I'm going to mix it as long as everything is incorporated. And like I said, I'm going to try to do it all in one direction. That's all, just like this. Oh, this is so delicious looking already. I love it. Okay, so let's put, start putting them in our forms. I'm going to try to divide up this batter in half. So I have two even layers, okay? Uh, I'm going to divide them up and I'm going to try to even out everything as much as possible because I'm going to try to prevent any air pockets that might be uh, in, the, in the meringue because remember, it's so light and fluffy. So I'm going to try to even out the best I can because we want to have two even um, layers for, for this cake, okay? So I'm going to do my best to kind of like make them even and even them all out. Oh, it's delicious to eat it already, I think. <laughs> I love it. All right, just like that. All right, so now I'm going to preheat the oven to 300 degrees. And I'm going to bake it for two long hours at 300 degrees for two hours, nice and slow until they turn nice and golden color. Two hours later, this is what they look like. Aren't they gorgeous? Yum! Now listen, this is the time that I'm going to let them cool off for a whole six hours. They need to completely cool off before I use them. But I just need to make sure that they are nice and cooked. I'm going to use like a, uh, a toothpick or something like that just to make a little hole in the middle and make sure that it comes out nice and dry because we don't want anything gooey inside, okay? So let them cool off for six hours. In the meanwhile, I need to start working on my custard cream. So I'm going to measure out one and three fourth cup of milk. To that, I'm going to mix in one cup of sugar and I'm gonna put it on a stove to bring it to a boil, okay? It has to come to a boil. Remember all those 12 egg yolks? Well, here they are. And I'm gonna return them back into the mixer and I'm gonna mix them until they're all nice and fluffy. It doesn't have to be a very long kind of mixing, but they do have to kind of come together and become all nicely combined. Okay, and that is going to be the base for our custard 
buttercream. All right, so the boiled milk, I need to start mixing it with the eggs and I'm gonna do it slowly because I don't wanna turn this into a, you know, scrambled eggs, right? So I'm gonna add like a tablespoon at a, uh, at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, just like that, until the egg mixture becomes nice and warm. And at this point, it's gonna be safe for me to add all of the milk um, and not, to, you know, not cook the egg accidentally either. All right. So I'm just going to mix it all together. And now I need to return it back onto the stove and, um, and make the custard cream. All right. So, um, it's, it looks like it's a complicated process, but it's really not. It's just, you just have to follow the steps and it's going to come out just fine. So now I'm going to put it back on a stove. Um, the, I'm going to put it on low heat, low, medium to low heat, and I will not leave the stove. I'm going to stir it continuously, very gently, because I want to make sure that nothing burns to the bottom and there will be no uh, like scrambled egg pieces anywhere because I want to make a custard out of it. So it's been cooking for about four minutes now and it's becoming much, much thicker. And I like how it's coming out consistency. I'm going to turn off the heat uh, and I'm going to take it off the heat just to um, and continue stirring it for a minute or two until everything is fluffy. OK, so I'm going to take a little bit uh, of that cream off. Probably close to, I don't know, maybe a cup, maybe a little bit less than a cup. I don't know. I really didn't measure. Um, and that is going to be my chocolate sauce because that's what I'm going to be using to decorate the cake. Because if you guys uh, ever seen uh, Tort Kiev, it always has chocolate and must, um, custard cream as well. So white and uh, chocolatey. So I'm going to put um, just a cocoa powder and I'm mixing a very generous four teaspoons of cocoa powder into that. And I'm going to mix it all together until it becomes a nice and silky and smooth cream. And that is going to be just for decorating my cake. And I'm going to set it aside. The custard cream, it's important to cover, and I'm going to push the ceram wrap all the way against uh, the cream, um, the layer of the cream, because I don't want any layers to create on it. Like when it's cooling off, I don't want anything to kind of like create a film on it. Okay, so here it is, the truth of taking out my um my dough my layers and the first one came out no problem and the second one is giving me trouble so i'm using a butter knife to kind of like scrape the edges to take it out i was like what is going on the first one did not give me any trouble whatsoever and the second one is giving me trouble so i'm just scraping off the extra um dough that kind of like um kind of like cooked on the edges and i'm not going to throw away any of that crumble actually i'm going to save it and uh, i'm going to be using it to decorate the sides so to help me to remove it i'm just going to run uh the butter knife on the edge of the of the pan to kind of like loosen everything up to take it out uh, without breaking it too much all right time for simple uh, syrup so I'm going to use the simple syrup to kind of like soak the layers a little bit to soften them up. And normally the single uh, simple simple syrup is one to one, water to sugar, but I am decreasing sugar by half. I think it's sweet enough. And my friends, because this is um, a holiday cake, I'm going to be adding a little bit of rum, uh, just a tablespoon, not much. This is spiced rum. If I had cognac, I would have used that as well, but um, I'm just putting what I have. You don't have to. You can just put vanilla instead, and that will be fine as well. And I'm just going to use that to soak up the layers, to soften them up a little bit. Okay, so also remember all that crumble that fell off the, uh, from the layers. Well, I'm not going to throw them away. I'm going to use them to pulverize them with one cup of nuts. And that is what's going to be used on the sides of the cake to decorate the sides. It's very important to cover up all of the broken sides that I have. All right, 
so the custard has cooled off. That means I need to bring up the butter. And I have a stick of soft butter and I'm gonna whip it uh, in the mixer. I'm gonna whip it for a while until it turns nice and soft. And actually it's gonna change the color from yellow to white. That's what happens with butter when it uh, whips for a while. And I'm gonna be using um, one stick of butter for my yellow custard cream. And when I whip the, um, the chocolate, I also gonna use one stick of butter for that as well. And believe you me, that is not as much as other creams require. I am cutting the uh, butter by half. Okay, so look, it's nice and soft and fluffy. And to that, I'm going to be adding my custard now. And it's going to be all combined together and it will become nice and sweet and fluffy, yellow kind of um, delicious cream that I'm going to be using in my cake. Now, remember, don't forget the chocolate one. We have to do the same thing with the chocolate, combine it with butter. Okay, I'm going to uh, now set the cake. I have a large plate and I'm going to be using the spring uh, circle from the spring. I always put a little do a dollop of cream on the bottom. That helps to kind of secure the layers on them a little bit. And I'm going to start stacking them. Okay, I'm going to start stacking them because that's what's going to help to um, hold the cake together. All right, so the first step is I am going to be soaking the layer with a little bit of um, simple uh, syrup that I made with a little bit of rum. Um, this is an extra step, you don't have to do it, but I find that it helps my cake to be soft. And now it's time for the cream. Listen, I am very generous on the cream because I know that some of this cream will ooze out on the sides. So I'm putting a very heavy layer of cream all around, okay? It's okay if it's oozing out. We're gonna be adding more on the sides as well. Look how beautiful, yum. Okay, so the next step is I need to put the second layer, and I know it's a little broken, but it's okay, trust me, we will cover all of that up. So I'm gonna be putting some on the top, I'm gonna be putting some on the sides to cover everything up as much as I can. And again, if it doesn't look perfect, don't worry, because I have all that egg and crumble to put on the sides to cover everything up. And then at the end, we still have decorations. All right, let's keep covering everything. All right, so I'm gonna be putting some of that crumble on the sides, and again, trust me, that's what's gonna to help to cover up all of the imperfections. It's okay, it's a homemade cake. It's not a professional cake, but trust me, it will be delicious. All right, so now it's time to decorate. And for some reason, my cream was a little bit too soft, I probably should have put it in the fridge. It would have set the cream more, but it's okay. It's still gonna be fine. I'm gonna end up decorating with a little bit extra chocolate and a little extra walnuts. It's gonna be perfect. Look at that. So I just took a little bit of uh, chocolate chips, I melted, and I put it in the piping bag and I'm just decorating a little bit just to bring extra uh, chocolate to it because Tortkiev is always a combination of chocolate and custard cream. Beautiful. All right, so here is Tortkiev or Cake Kiev, named after the city Kiev. Friends, I hope you have a blessed and healthy new year. On this note, Happy New Year. <laughs>